Hi there, awesome friends. Today we're going to try something new. I haven't done this in ages and I thought it's now time to share with you. So I will hope you'll give it a try with me. Today we are going to be using Stays On ink. So please make sure that your ink pad is juicy, so refill it if necessary. If it's too dry it doesn't work so clearly. Um, and off we go. Let's get started. Okay, so I've already stamped this one and these were using kitty stamps that I've had for many years. So there's your butterfly. Um, and then we are going to use, an, I can't believe it, a 70 micron tape, your 70 micron tape to do our imprints with our stays on, or our stamps with our stays on ink. Okay, I just wanted to show you quickly that I have just done these as a test run and they came out really cute. You can see there's a little bit of dimension. I didn't pop them too much and I used this lovely stamp. Um, it's a new stamp that I've just bought. So, use what you have. Don't rush out and buy. So if you don't have stays on ink, I don't know, give it a try, but the other inks don't work so well. Alrighty. I only want to show you how I ink ink my sorry a bit of fluff there ink my stamp and I'm sure you've seen this a hundred times if you follow any YouTube stampers it is always better to ink the stamp than put the stamp on the ink so we'll do that with our nice juicy stamp pad and I must admit, the bigger stamps work easier. So try them first before you give an attempt on a smaller stamped area. Okay. And there you go. Okay. As you can see, it's not perfectly uh, clear, but it's, it's adequate for what we needed. Okay. In the meantime, I've got the wooden stamp blocks, so that's the little cow, and you've already seen the butterfly which I've stamped previously. So you can use your silicone stamps, you can use your wooden blocked stamps, any stamp you like, and give it a try. The simpler pattern, the better. We're going to start with the butterfly, and I'm just going to work on one thing at a time. And I'm going to show you a very cool trick that I discovered. Because remember, we're working with metal tape. So unlike pewter, it has a backing. And it's quite difficult to work from the back when you can't see everything clearly. So using a piece of carbon paper, this is one of my secrets I'm teaching you today, we are going to outline the whole stamp. Okay, here we go. And just work slowly and outline your pattern or your stamp. I'm actually going to use a ballpoint pen because it, it glides a bit better. But remember, your ballpoint pen is inclined to slip, so work slowly with the ballpoint pen. So I prefer the ballpoint pen because it glides easier than the other tools. And as you can see, I'm really holding my piece of tape in place so that it doesn't slip. There you go. Feelers and the feelers, and here we can draw the little circles or designs. There 
tree. Okay. So the simpler the better. You don't want something too intricate. I'm going to show you something funny now when I'm finished. Okay. So the carbon paper is something I discovered myself because I struggled so badly to see the back when I was doing um, designs and I thought there's got to be a way. So I haven't seen anyone else use that this trick that I've shown you now. So voila, you've got your pattern on the back. And I'm full of carbon, on, <laughs> carbon dirt on this side. Let's just see if I've got my a little bit of acetone on a cotton wipe just to clean my hand. Okay, so we've done our, our pattern, which is really great. We've outlined it after we've stamped it. And now we can go ahead and technique it a bit. Alrighty, so let's get started. The, the one thing that I have discovered that it's better to start using your bigger tools and your paper stamp. Let's do the little circles first. As you can see, I'm still working on the flat surface. And there is a reason for that. Um, I don't want this to pop too much yet. Okay, so you can't really see, but the little dots are, are raised. This is a bit time consuming, so you're going to go around your raised areas again. Okay, we just did the dots. Okay, so we're defining the little dots. And with this technique, you've got to go back and forth all the time. Because the more you work back and forth, the better your design will be. Okay, so generally, when you're working on the right side, you're working on the hard surface. And when you're working on the wrong side, you're working on a soft surface. Or a magazine. Okay, now we're going to fill this in. Here we go. Fill that in there. Okie dokie. And work small areas at a time, not the whole thing at once. And the reason being is that if you stretch your tape all at once, it's really difficult to technique around the edges. So let's do that. And we've now done those longer pieces on the wings. And we are going to flatten them or go around them. Okay. Use your ballpoint pen if you want, or your pewter tool. So we are flattening that area around what we've just raised. I don't know if you can see, it's getting a little bit more, more interest and depth. Okay. Now we're going back to our dots because I want the dots to be a little bit more defined. So we're pushing the dots out a little bit. Remember, it's always better to stretch your metal tape a little bit at a time until you're happy with your, with your design. And if you work too hard, you can obviously tear your metal tape or poke your tool right through it. So work slowly and carefully. There we go. And then what do we do now? We go back and we turn it over and we go around everything again and flatten around the pattern. Okay. Flatten around the pattern. So whenever you stretch an area, 
Then you flip it over and you flatten it again around the pattern. There you go. So I want to give a shout out today to two very talented um, people that I follow on YouTube. And the one is Nanette Kruger. She is amazing. amazing. And then is Merrick Art. They are both really, really amazing. Give them a follow. We all need someone to inspire us. So, and if you notice I did something wrong, or not really wrong, I just didn't want it to pop too much, so I've taken away the, the yellow felt. Okay. So let's have a look. I'm not sure if you can see, but slowly but slowly it is, is starting to get raised. Um, the one area that we didn't go around was our body of our butterfly. So let's do that now. Flat, flattening around the body of the butterfly. Okie dokie. So you can see it's slowly getting raised. Take your time and feel the, uh, feel confident about your your, thing, your product project. Sorry. So I have this wonderful tool that um, you can get from my friend Tanya. Tanya's heart. Uh, she imported them, and she gifted me this tool. I think I've mentioned it in a previous tutorial, and it's really nice to flatten around the edges. So we're just flattening around the edges, especially the areas near where we have worked. Okay, and this just keeps your metal tape flat. Okay. It's a lovely Teflon tool and it's worth investing in one. Okay. So there we've done our stamped image and now I look at it and it seems to be a bit plain. So we can technique it more. Let's put some uh, eyes maybe on our butterfly. Some eyes and we'll work the feelers. Okay, this feeler. And here we go. Okay. And once again, whenever we've worked on the one side, we have to flatten. Especially your, your outer edges need to be flattened. Okay. And there I worked a little bit hard, so I have to go back because I've flattened the area that I've just worked on. So here we have to go back using my tool, not my pen. Just work that area again. So gently, gently, slowly, slowly. Okay. And then again, flatten. okay so you can leave it like that and say to yourself i'm happy with it or we can do a little bit of extra work and you know me i always like to go one step further so now we've worked the small areas which is great but we want our project to pop a bit using your paper stamp. We are now going to smooth within the lines, trying to avoid the areas that we have worked, like our dots and those areas. So basically, the background, we are slowly with circular movements with our paper stamp working the other areas. 
And this is going to make your whole design pop. You can obviously uh, do a tag with this or a bigger design. Um, you, know, you can use all of these techniques on any design you like, whether it be big or small. But this is a taper tag um, tutorial that I'm sharing, although I'm not doing a small tag for the tutorial I've done a bigger area because it's just easier to see so now I've popped the whole design and as you can see the, the tape has buckled look it's not lying flat so what do we do we take our lovely Teflon tool if you don't have the Teflon tool you can use your paper stump and round we go working slowly and the paper stump does work just make sure you have a a sharp paper stump and obviously the ladies at Duputa have other tools that they can use you know just use what you have paper stump works just as well I just prefer the tool because the tool really gets into those nooks and crannies you know that the the paper stamp struggles to get into. Okay. Basically flattening all around the design. And then as you work, you can see areas that might need a little bit more work and I can see that the bottom part of the wings I want them to pop a little bit more so using this tool we'll define it a little bit more from the back and it certainly helps to have the design on the back so you can keep within the lines Whereas if you didn't have this design, you're just working with the imprint on the on the backing, which is sometimes not very clear. So let me know what you think um, about the carbon paper. So here I'm using my paper stump. Just to show you, you can use it instead of the Teflon tool. Okay. And so we go. And then I can also see this area I didn't define enough for my liking. So going back with my paper stump. Just making it pop a bit more. And that one there. So, as we mentioned earlier, slow and steady. Go back until you're satisfied. Okay. And, and I think I'm satisfied. I've popped it out about a little under a millimeter. But if I look at these long areas here, I want to smooth them a bit. So just smoothing those. Moving that one. Okay, so now I have raised my butterfly and it looks amazing. Now you notice that I didn't work the front and go around everything with my tool that I normally do. That technique is like outline everything. I've used this or the paper stamp to flatten the borders. So there's no drawn line around the design. Okay, so 
So now we've in, we've actually <coughs> embossed our area. So it's raised embossing. It's dimensional embossing. And to prevent it from getting squished, you need to fill the back with your beeswax or texture paste. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And then just to show you again our little lion and our little elephant. So as you can see, this is black. And I quite like leaving it just like this. You don't have to do anything. But if you do want to technique the back, then just color with your Sharpie. And if you don't want the black after you've finished your design, you take a little bit of acetone on a cotton swab and you wipe it. So let's see what you can do with your stamped images. Can't wait to see. Please share on our Facebook group, Taper Tag, and have a lot of fun.